Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about Subaru head gaskets and head gasket failures. A little more in depth than we've talked about previously. A uh, continuing trend I see in forums, uh, Facebook pages, etc. Anywhere on the internet where vehicles are discussed and Subarus are one of the topics discussed. I always see a lot of misinformation, myths, and a bunch of bunk essentially spread around regarding Subarus and mainly focused on head gaskets and head gasket issues. So in today's video, we're gonna go more in depth with this, cover what engines exactly were affected, the year models, what the failure was, what type of failure it had, the different versions of head gaskets, what to put on when you do have a failed head gasket, what part to replace, how to go through that replacement so you won't have a failure again, and just a general overview trying to get all the misinformation I can off of the web and out of a lot of guys' heads. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into this video. So when did these head gasket issues start for Subaru? They started in around the 97-98 model year with the introduction of the EJ25D. That was the dual overhead cam naturally aspirated 2.5 liter. That engine suffered from internal head gasket failures where compression would be pushed into the cooling jackets and you would have overheating issues, you would have bubbling in your overflow, you would see uh, bubbles in the coolant in the radiator, you would uh, push coolant from the radiator into the overflow. Uh, some severe cases, you could crack your radiator, usually the plastic tanks or the seam between the plastic and the aluminum, uh, blow older, more fragile heater hoses, coolant lines, radiator hoses, if they were old and degraded, and so on and so forth. Normally you did not have uh, an external leak with those head gaskets that came with the later engine with the single overhead cam, and you usually didn't see a milky mixture of oil and coolant. Sometimes you did, but most of the time it was straight combustion to coolant. Now, from there, in about 2000, Subaru introduced the EJ251, which was the first single red cam 2.5 liter EJ naturally aspirated engine for the US market. Those engines had head gasket failures as well, but that head gasket failure was different. That was usually an external leak, where if you looked underneath the engine, between the cylinder heads and the engine block, you'd see coolant oil or both leaking between the head and the block. And it was an external leak. A lot of times you would not get overheating with these engines. You would just have external leaks. And as long as you monitored your engine oil level and coolant level, you wouldn't have too much of a rush to get to replacing them. Now that said, the way the Subaru cylinder heads and block are designed, the oil drain back from the cylinder head back into the block down into the oil pan, those oil passages are at the bottom of the block. Above that are the coolant passages and above that are the combustion chambers. So there was the chance to mix coolant and oil. In that instance, you would need to get those replaced immediately because once water gets into your oil, coolant gets into your oil, it dilutes the oil and it hinders the lubricity of the oil and it makes it far easier for you to tear up a main bearing, tear up a rod bearing, seize your engine, do a lot more damage than say an external leak that has to get extremely bad normally before you risk hydro locking the engine. Normally you'll just get enough coolant in there to uh, steam clean the combustion chamber. You will uh, sometimes can foul a spark plug out, get some rust and corrosion on the spark plug. Um, you know, it's not usually dumping massive amounts of coolant into that combustion chamber enough to actually hydro lock the engine and bend a, va uh, bend a rod, but it does happen if the issue is neglected to be fixed and continues to be exacerbated. So 
talked about the dual overhead cams, internal gasket leaks. Now with the single overhead cam, you had the EJ251, the EJ252, which was had a very short run in the US market and select vehicles, and the EJ253. All of those engines were affected by head gasket failure. Now, a lot of people wonder why the failure occurred, and as far as my research has come up, and what I have seen firsthand in repairing these cars, the issue itself is the head gasket. The way the original Subaru head gasket was made is the root of the problem here. Now, a lot of people want to think that all Subarus have head gasket issues, and that's not the case. As I named off, EJ25D, EJ251, EJ252, EJ253 are the main four engines with this issue. And if you break it down even further than that, it's basically just naturally aspirated 2.5s in the dual overhead cam and single overhead cam uh, configuration. Now, Subaru has plenty of engines that have never had head gasket issues. If we look at the six-cylinder model, starting back with the old ER27, we move from there to the EG33, that was in the SVX models. ER27 was in the old XT, the big wedge from the 80s, that was the precursor to the SVX. From there, we got the EZ30D in the early 2000s in Outback and Legacy models. No head gasket issues there. It was later put in the Tribeca. From there, that engine was revamped again with different cylinder heads and became the EZ30D Phase Two. No issues there with head gaskets. Then we moved to the EZ36D, which was the modern engine that just was discontinued for the 2019 or 2020 model and replaced with the new Turbo Four. No issues there. Uh, we'll put an asterisk on that. We'll come back to that in a little bit about the EZ36D. Now, moving to the four-cylinder engines. Uh, we didn't get them in the U.S. market, but there was an EJ15 1.5 liter. There was an EJ16. No head gasket failures with those engines. The EJ18 we did see in some base model Imprezas in the early 90s. No head gasket issues there. The tried and true old EJ22, no issues from the phase one or phase two EJ22 in the US market. Moving to turbo engines, the EJ205 that came in US spec WRXs did not have head gasket issues. The EJ255, the Legacy GT Forester XT Outback XT engine, no head gasket issues. The EJ257, as we know, the STI 2.5 liter turbo, no head gasket issues from that engine either. So Subaru has a lot of engines they offer that do not have this head gasket issue, but if you get on forums, if you get on Facebook, if you get on all these places where vehicles are discussed and Subaru is brought up, everyone screams, head gasket failure, head gasket failure, head gasket failure. And that's not the case, it's just the NA 2.5s. Now that has been alleviated in the new FA and FB engines. There's no longer known head gasket issues. And when I say known head gasket issues, there are isolated cases where head gaskets fail. Most of the time it's due to neglect. It's due to being run hot. It's being run low on coolant and subsequently running hot. You know, anything like that will bake a head gasket, blow a head gasket. We're talking about failure of the gasket just because the way the gasket's made or the way the engine's made. That's another argument I hear all the time is that the boxer engine inherently has head gasket failures and that's not true either. We know from all the Subaru engines I just listed off that are boxer configurations that do not have head gaskets that it's not a common issue associated only with boxer engines if that was true everyone would be complaining about their Porsches blowing head gaskets because Porsche still uses boxer engines, mainly in the 911 series and I believe in the Boxsters, which are kind of a uh, same series and the Carreras, all the same basic chassis. I don't think the Panamera, pretty sure the Panamera uses a V8 as well as the uh, whatever, the, the Cayenne, whatever SUV they have now and now they've gone electric, but we're not here to talk about Porsches, we're here to talk about Subarus and head gasket failures. So, the reason those head gaskets failed in those engines was due to the head gasket itself. Subaru had been using, up until this time, 
a known good head gasket they've not had issues with it well for these engines in particular they decided to change up the head gasket and this is the head gasket in question right here you can still go to your subaru dealership and buy this head gasket they still make it even knowing that it's a big problem this one in particular i just went to my subaru dealership went to the parts guy said how what ej head gaskets do you have in stock he pulled them all out i grabbed one of these and i grabbed one of the ones that are what we're going to show you are the permanent fix for this issue so this one is part number 11044 aa633 i'm not exactly sure of what it's for but it's probably for a single overhead cam 2.5 now this head gasket is the failure this one right here it is a single layer gasket and it has this graphite coating on it this is why the head gaskets fail. This graphite coating lasts about 120,000 miles. Usually when I see them fail, it's between 120, 150,000 miles. I should have grabbed some failed head gaskets to bring you, but they're out in the shop right now. I will probably be putting some images behind me or here on the screen of tons and tons of these I've replaced over the years. So the problem is that the coating fails around 120, 150,000 miles. Now I have seen these things make it at 200,000 miles, which is a miracle in itself, but we'll put an asterisk on that and I'll tell you why some of them got so high mileage. So the coating fails, it peels off. Once it fails and starts chipping off, boom, you're not gonna seal anymore. Your coolant oil is gonna leak. These things are junk, do not buy them, do not put them on your car. If you have a head gasket failure and you're doing the repair, do not buy these. Do not let your parts man at the Subaru dealership sell you these. Don't buy them on Amazon, don't buy them on eBay. We're gonna talk real quick about head gaskets that are what I recommend to fix this issue and fix it for good. So here's one of the head gaskets here. This one, I'm not exactly sure what model it's for because they vary slightly between the STI and the uh, WRX and the XT model vehicles. But all of them basically are interchangeable. Almost near, nearly every EJ series head gasket is interchangeable. So what you want to do and the way to fix this issue permanently is to get the Subaru MLS gasket. It's a multi-layer steel gasket. There is no coating on this to fail. This is the gasket style that they used on the turbo models. I don't know exactly why they use it. I assume it's because the turbo models are receiving boost from the turbo and it makes for a stronger seal for the head. But this is the fix. This is what I do with customer cars, my own vehicles. When I have a single rivet cam vehicle come in, with a failed head gasket, 99% of the time I'm pulling off that coated head gasket and I replace it with one of these MLS turbo gaskets. Once you put that on there, you are not gonna have a head gasket issue again as long as you do the replacement correctly. Now, when you're replacing these head gaskets, what I mean by replacing them and doing the job correctly, when you pull your heads, make sure you send it to a reputable machine shop. You want to get these heads um, decked. You want to get them pressure tested. You want to get them checked for any cracks, anything of that nature. You want a perfect flat level surface. Plenty of you DIY guys, I'm sure there's plenty of videos you've seen online, and I know a lot of you have done this. Uh, there's the old hack of getting a glass table and taping sandpaper or some other flat surface. I just say glass because glass is pretty easily, uh, easy to know, pretty flat surface. Putting sandpaper on it and then pushing your cylinder heads back and forth on the sandpaper to machine them. That can get you by if you are doing this repair on the side of the road, but please, please, please take your heads to a reputable machine shop and get them shaved. Make sure your valves are checked you know, when you're doing this job, it's a pretty in-depth job. If you're paying someone to do this job, it's an expensive job as well. So do it once, do it right. While your heads are off, make sure all your valves are good. If you've got any burnt valves, have them replaced. If you've got any bad valve seats, have them ground. You know, just go through the sonar heads completely. You don't want to get this thing back together and have to pull the heads again because you have an issue with your valves. 
you've got a crack, you've got a drop valve guide, and we'll talk about that right now real quick. In the later model EJs, normally it's the EJ253, the early models without the ABCS, some of the ABCS models were affected. They had a common problem where they would pull valve guides out of the cylinder head. That was due to carbon buildup on the exhaust valves. This carbon valve would go in. The carbon would act as a form of sandpaper friction modifier and basically jam the valve against the guide. And as the camshaft came around to push the valve back open, it would grab the valve guide and slowly start pulling it out over thousands of miles, essentially. It's not something right away but it would drop valve guides out. So another thing, make sure your valve guides are installed correctly. Make sure you don't have any drop valves. If you do, you know, they can put oversized valve guides in it. There's all kinds of ways they can correct this issue for you. So do the proper steps to repair this thing right and you won't have issues again. So many people have commented and came to me on videos in the past where I've and I feel really bad for them when they change their head gaskets and they have a blown head gasket again, you know, a couple thousand miles down the road, a couple years down the road. And a lot of times it's one not properly getting the head's condition for the repair. And another is not properly torquing the head. And then third is not using the right gasket. I cannot stress enough using the MLS Subaru OE gasket on these cars. Lots of people are standoffish about using a Subaru gasket because the Subaru gasket is what failed. Well, the reason it failed is because you were using gasket A or using gasket B. That's the big thing that a lot of people aren't taking away from it. When I when people ask me and I suggest, you know, what head gasket I say use the original Subaru one and I give them the specifics. A lot of people ask me about aftermarket head gaskets and I do not recommend aftermarket head gaskets on Subarus. People talk about the new design Fail Pro. I've seen them fail. People talk about six stars. I've seen six star gaskets fail. Whether it was the gasket itself that failed or what I talked about with the proper prep work, can't say, but I have seen the aftermarket gaskets fail. Steer clear of eBay and anything you see in that type of demographic, anything cheap and from China. Do not waste your money putting cheap gaskets on it. You'll be doing the job again. Do it right and do it once. So that is basically it for the EJs and the issues. We've talked about why they fail, what vehicles were affected, what engines were affected, what to, how to remedy the problem, you know, what materials and procedures to use to fix the problem. Now we put an asterisk earlier on the EZ36D. There are a few isolated issues of head gasket failure on the 3.6 liters. If I recall correctly, it usually affects the right hand bank. It's normally an external leak and it normally happens pretty low mileage before 100,000 miles. There was a service bulletin on it. I don't have it in front of me now, but um, usually Subaru it happens where Subaru will cover it under warranty. I don't know if it's still an issue in the later models. I know it was an issue about 2011 to 2013, 2014. I think in that range is where they were seeing the issues. Not sure what the cause was either. I'm not sure if it was a head gasket issue, a manufacturing issue, or something wrong with the cylinder head. Can't say, but the main focus is on four cylinders in this video. A little bit earlier we talked about the fact that some of these coated gaskets make it to 200,000 miles. To touch really quickly on this, I covered it in another video. It was Subaru's, uh, Subaru's coolant conditioner. As a retroactive uh, initiative to try to save themselves a lot of money, Subaru put out a service bulletin informing dealers to put a bottle, essentially a restickered bottle of Holtz Radweld into every customer's vehicle. Not happy about this, but it was what Subaru had to do at the time to basically prevent their bankruptcy because pretty sure at that time, late 90s, early 2000s, had Subaru bit the bullet, recalled all these cars and or extended the warranty on the head gasket repairs, it 
could have very well put a humongous dent in the company having to eat all the head gaskets. They were 100% responsible for it. That's, no, that's not a question here. I'm not defending Subaru or their actions. I'm just explaining why most likely, in my opinion, they did what they did and handled it the way they handled it. Still don't agree with it. Now, that said, that um, coolant conditioner, like I said, is basically restickered. Stop leak. So that's why some of these gaskets lasted longer before they failed. But if, if you still have the single layer head gasket on there, it's going to fail. It's just a matter of time. Sorry to inform you, people all the way up until 2012 model with your EJ253s, if it hasn't failed, it will. It's just an inevitability. Now, what can you do to prolong it? Replace your coolant on time. I can't stress that enough. People do not do preventative maintenance anymore. Three years, 36,000 miles on green. Uh, Subaru recommends, I believe, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the blue Subaru Super Coolant. I would change it much earlier than that. I probably wouldn't have it in there more than eight years or 80,000 miles, just personally. That stems back to my fear of Dex Cool back when I was messing with GM's Dex Cool, you know, came out. And GM said it's lifetime coolant, and then we all found out that that was a bunch of bunk, and Dex Cool became acidic and corrosive and would eat aluminum cylinder heads, it would eat intake manifolds, it would destroy your gasket sets. Whole bunch of issues with the 3800 V6s, all the Vortec V8s, V6s with failed lower intake gaskets, eating lower intake manifolds, aluminum away, and just really nasty stuff. So I'm always leery about this high mileage coolant. I know it's a different formulation from Dex Cool, but still, I wouldn't leave it in for 10 years or 100,000 miles. It's cheap insurance to replace it early. So coolant, make sure you replace it on time and make sure you stay on top of that maintenance. So that basically will do it for this video. I know it's a little bit longer. Hopefully you guys stuck with me. We've tried to dispel a lot of myths and bunk floating around Subarus and the head gasket issues. So we've talked about which engines were affected, what the reason for it was, how to properly repair them, make sure the repair is done right once the first time and you don't have to worry about it again. You know, what Subaru's reaction was to these issues. Um, you know, we've gone basically covered all the bases that I know to cover at this given time. Uh, I might need to expound upon it with another video later on if there are questions arising from this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will try to get to all of you as quickly as I can. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.